Hmm, clear resins could be trickier than you'd think. Let's sort that out. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys. Today I'm tackling another resin printing tutorial in the hope of clearing up a few questions I've been receiving and hopefully walk you through exactly how to get the clearest possible results. This tutorial has been kindly sponsored by Resion and they've sent me over a bottle of their G217 which promises high transparency and yellowing resistance. So I'll be leaning heavily on their instructions whilst throwing in a few tips of my own. Now I've heard this brand pronounced a few different ways such as Resi1, Resion and even Resiné if you want a little French flair. Personally, I'll be sticking with Resion, as it feels right to me. Plus, it'll give the pronunciation police something to argue about. When printing with transparent resins, folks typically hit two main problems, cloudiness and yellowing. So let's tackle these issues as we go. All resins contain a few chemical nasties, so always wear protective gear. This means an apron, gloves, eye protection and ideally a respirator. Furthermore, crack open a few windows and maximise the room ventilation. Before you begin, thoroughly clean your resin tray and build plate. Any leftover resin, especially coloured or older material, can mix with your clear resin. This could lead to chemical impurities and a spoiled finish. So this step is a must. Now it's no surprise that to get a perfect print, you'll need to dial in your resin exposure settings. Now Resion recommend the following settings for their G217, but remember this is only a starting point. Personally, I recommend taking your time to dial things in just right. And if this isn't an area that you're comfortable with, I've previously done a couple of tutorial videos that should make this process much, much easier. Now G17 is a very versatile resin, so you won't have many restrictions on what you decide to print, whether it's artistic, functional, or just plain fun. For this video, I've opted for two simple ideas. A small gem with a few faceted faces, which will hopefully look a little bit diamond-like when finished. And secondly, a large magnifying glass, which should be pretty challenging. Resion recommend medium thickness supports and suggest avoiding over supporting. Now that actually goes against my typical instincts which are to generally go with lots of small supports. So for your benefit and my curiosity, I'm going to try both. The gem is just for demonstration purposes, so one thick support should do the job there. The lens is large, thick and heavy so good solid supports are a must here. But I'll also add lots of fine supports on the edges just to see what happens. One last consideration is layer height. Most folks typically print at 0.05 layer height, which produces 20 layers per millimeter, which is fairly smooth. But with transparent resins, we really can benefit from an even smoother surface if we drop this to a layer height of 0.03, as this gives us 33 layers per millimeter and a much, much smoother result. And that's what I'll be using here. Unlike most resins, G217 should not be shaken before use. Shaking can introduce micro bubbles that cloud your prints and ruin clarity. Instead, allow the bottle to sit undisturbed for at least 24 hours before use to ensure maximum transparency. Ideally, the resin needs to be at a temperature of between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. If you're below this, as is fairly typical here in the UK, an enclosure heater is ideal, or you could stand the resin bottle in warm water for a few minutes before pouring. Now all we need to do is sit back and let things print. Once finished, let the plate and print drain for at least an hour to remove residual resin. Cleaning away the uncured resin is a critical step. Here I'm using an airbrush loaded with ethanol and obviously I'm wearing a respirator. 
I'm initially washing over the surface, then I'll remove the supports and bathe the print in an ultrasonic cleaner with fresh ethanol. And it was in clipping away the supports that I regretted experimenting with lots of small supports. They worked, yes, but clipping away stuff you can hardly see is tricky and if these supports are too close together, they do stick into one lump. For the moment, I'll be keeping these large supports as they make handling easier. They are extra thick, so I'll be using a jeweler saw to cut them away. Resion stressed that the model must be fully dry before curing, so wash well and dry gently. Curing is possibly the most critical stage with transparent resins. Under curing can cause problems, over curing can cause problems, and heat can also cause problems. So Resion recommend curing for up to 5 minutes in a 40 watt curing station. Unfortunately, my curing station is on the large side at 70 watts, so I'm a bit stuffed there. So here, I'm going to break away from Resion's official instructions and go my own way. Sorry sponsors. I used a water technique that helps prevent overheating, overcuring and undercuring issues. This is distilled water, so it's nice, pure and free from chemical nasties. Critically, it's been stored in my fridge, so it's a nice cool 6 degrees Celsius. I'm using a very clean plastic bowl and fully submerging my print in this cool, clean water. It's worth gently rotating the print a couple of times to ensure that there are no surface bubbles on the print. Next, I place the bowl carefully inside my curing station. I then cured for two minutes and allowed everything to rest for another two minutes. I then rotated the print and repeated the process. Two minutes on, two minutes off, then rotate. I repeated this process ten times in total, curing for a full twenty minutes, simply because my print was very thick in places. Now you may think this curing regime is a little over the top, but from my personal experience, I can tell you it really works very well. But if you're at all unsure, feel free to follow the manufacturer's instructions instead. Here I'm drying the fully cured print using a very gentle, lukewarm setting with a standard hairdryer. I know the print is obviously cloudy, and this cloudiness is caused by microscopic layer lines and surface roughness, which diffuse reflections. And the cure for this is to smooth the surface, either by sanding or dipping. Borrowing a trick from car body repair, I'm going to spray both sides of my lens with ordinary black auto primer spray paint. Thanks to the black primer, you can really see all the imperfections in the print surface. So, on a nice soft towel to avoid scratching, I used wet and dry sandpaper with warm soapy water and sanded each face. I actually started with 600 grit paper, then changed my mind and dropped to 400 grit paper, then slowly increased in grit size, moving through the various stages until I ended up with 4000 grit paper. And eventually you'll end up with something that looks almost perfect. The final step is spray varnish. I recommend using Mr. Super Clear Gloss, as it does have UV protection, and follow the instructions carefully you'll be amazed what happens. Two to three light coats work best. And here it is. I truly hope you can see at home how crystal clear this is. There's a few imperfections thanks to my poor sanding skills, but honestly, it's extremely clear without any hint of yellowing. I kept one support, as you can see, and around this I designed a handle to incorporate the lens. A little glue supports both halves and holds the lens very nicely. And look at that, it really works. Just like glass, it's a bit blurry unless you get a perfect focal point. But for a homemade lens, it's very impressive. And all due credit goes to the resin. Now sanding is a great way to smooth your prints and make them nice and transparent. But this works best on large prints. It's hard to sand surfaces properly on small intricate prints like this gem, and in these instances, Resion recommends dipping. There's an excellent demonstration of this on the Resion website. 
With your model printed and washed clean of any residue, you'll need to heat a container of G217. Here you can see hot water being used, but don't get any of that in your resin. Personally, I took a clean container, added some resin, then placed this on the bed of my FDM printer. With a simple bit of G-code, I was able to heat the container without the risk of water contamination. The print is then dipped into the hot resin, taking care not to burn yourself. Then it's shaken and allowed to drip dry for several minutes. This ensures a thin, even coating, which I didn't do because I'm stupid and always in a rush. Then, without touching the surface, cure your print. You may find a UV torch helpful initially, but a curing station is ultimately your best friend. If the print is small, you can certainly skip using the water as I demonstrated earlier, but I would still recommend curing in stages. With this small print, I only gave it 5 minutes in total, but thanks to the resting stages, it never overheated and as you can see, the results are excellent. Except for the fact that I rushed the drip dry stage and ended up with a weird shape and a little dust. But the results are there, nice and clear with no yellowing. I then recommend using the same varnish to protect your finish. Now this is a sponsored video and not a review, but I still feel the need to comment on a product I'm lending my voice to. So does it work? Yes, it works very well but you get out of it what you put into it. Follow the instructions carefully, take your time, and you should see the results that you're hoping for. However, all clear resins can age, and Resium tell us G217 is sensitive to cold and humidity, so prints can turn brittle or soften over time. They recommend storing them in a dry place, ideally sealed in an airtight bag, or coated with protective varnish as we've done here. And that's it for this video guys. If you want to have a go at making the magnifying glass, check the description for links to free STL files. So take care guys, and thanks for watching.